On the evening of March 6, 2009, in the quiet tree-lined streets of Crestwood, the lifeless body of Martha Whitman was discovered in her bed, her face twisted in a final silent scream. To the outside world, it appeared that the 58-year-old widow had passed away peacefully in her sleep. But as Detective Laura Evans sifted through the details of her death, the perfect facade of the Whitman family began to crack, revealing a twisted web of betrayal, obsession, and murder that would leave the entire community reeling. The beginning of 2008 was marked by a profound sense of loss for the Whitman family. Martha Whitman had just buried her husband, a man she had loved deeply for over three decades. The house on Elm Street felt emptier than ever, and the weight of grief settled heavily over Martha. It was during this difficult time that Anna, her daughter-in-law, stepped in to offer comfort. Anna had always been close to her mother-in-law. From the moment she married Mark, she felt a bond with Martha that went beyond the typical in-law relationship. Martha had welcomed her into the family with open arms, often treating Anna more like a daughter than a daughter-in-law. When Martha's husband passed away, Anna naturally took it upon herself to be there for her, visiting frequently, cooking meals, and spending hours just listening as Martha reminisced about the past. The affair began innocently enough. One evening in mid-January, after putting the children to bed, Anna drove over to Martha's house with a bottle of wine, intending to lift Martha's spirits. They sat in the living room, the crackling fireplace providing warmth against the chilly winter night. The conversation flowed from light-hearted topics to deeper, more emotional ones as the wine loosened their tongues. As Martha spoke about the loneliness that had crept into her life since her husband's death, Anna reached out and held her hand, offering comfort in the only way she knew how. What began as a comforting touch soon became something more, as Martha leaned in and kissed Anna on the lips. Surprised, Anna pulled back, but Martha's eyes were filled with a mixture of longing and vulnerability that Anna had never seen before. Without fully understanding why, Anna leaned in again. And this time, she didn't pull away. From that night on, their relationship took on a new dimension. What had started as comfort in grief quickly became something darker, driven by a mix of passion, loneliness, and the forbidden nature of their connection. They met frequently, often under the pretense of Anna coming over to help with something or simply to keep Martha company. Each time, they would end up in Martha's bedroom, their relationship growing more intense and more complicated with each encounter. As the months passed, the strain of living a double life began to show in Anna. She became more distant from Mark, her husband. She found herself lying to him making up excuses for why she needed to go to Martha's house so often or why she was too tired to spend time with him. Mark noticed the changes in her, though he couldn't quite put his finger on what was wrong. He was often away on business trips, and when he was home, Anna seemed distracted, always on edge. Mark began to suspect that something was amiss. He would come home late at night, only to find Anna already in bed, feigning sleep. During the day, she was often glued to her phone, quickly putting it away whenever he entered the room. When he asked her about it, she brushed him off with vague answers, which only deepened his suspicions. Anna's growing secrecy and emotional distance gnawed at Mark. He would sometimes watch her from across the dinner table wondering if she was hiding something from him. But even in his wildest thoughts, he never imagined that his wife was involved with his own mother. 
The thought was simply too outrageous, too disturbing to even consider. Martha, meanwhile, was becoming increasingly possessive of Anna. What had started as a shared comfort had grown into a consuming obsession. Martha began demanding more and more of Anna's time, insisting that she come over every day, even when Mark was home. She would call Anna constantly, expecting immediate responses, and grew irrationally jealous whenever Anna mentioned spending time with anyone else, even Mark. The situation grew more intense as Martha's possessiveness turned into paranoia. She began to fear that Anna would leave her, that their secret affair would end. This fear drove Martha to manipulate Anna emotionally, threatening to expose their relationship if Anna ever tried to end it or refused her advances. Anna was trapped. She felt an overwhelming sense of guilt. Guilt for betraying her husband. Guilt for allowing things with Martha to go so far and guilt for being unable to break free from the affair. She knew that what she was doing was wrong, but the more she tried to pull away, the tighter Martha's grip became. The pressure began to take its toll on Anna. She couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, and found herself constantly on edge. She started making more mistakes at home, forgetting to pick up the kids from school, burning dinner, losing track of time. Mark noticed these changes too, and his concern grew. He tried to talk to Anna to ask her what was wrong, but she would just shake her head and insist that everything was fine, even as tears welled up in her eyes. By the end of April, the affair had become a dark, all-consuming force in Anna's life. She was caught in a web of deceit and emotional manipulation, unable to see a way out. The once comforting visits to Martha's home had become a dreaded routine, and Anna's marriage was beginning to crumble under the weight of her secret. By the time January 2009 rolled around, Mark Whitman was a man teetering on the edge. For months, he had been tormented by the changes in Anna's behavior. He couldn't shake the feeling that something was deeply wrong in his marriage. The distance between them had grown so wide that it felt as though they were living completely separate lives under the same roof. One cold January evening, after yet another tense dinner with Anna, Mark made a decision that would forever alter the course of their lives. He decided to install a hidden camera in their house. Mark chose a discreet location in their bedroom, carefully hiding the camera in a vent near the ceiling. It was positioned perfectly to capture everything that happened in the room. He set the camera to record continuously, then went about his day as if nothing had changed, all the while feeling a knot of anxiety tighten in his stomach. A week later, on a quiet Sunday afternoon, Mark retrieved the footage. He locked himself in his home office, heart pounding as he clicked through the videos. The first few clips showed nothing out of the ordinary, just Anna going about her day, folding laundry, and reading a book. But then, as Mark fast-forwarded through the footage, something caught his eye. He saw Anna walk into the bedroom, and moments later, Martha followed. Mark's heart nearly stopped. He watched, frozen in disbelief, as his mother approached Anna, touching her gently on the arm. The two women exchanged a look that sent a chill down Mark's spine. Then, without a word, they embraced and kissed their movements growing more passionate by the second. Mark felt like the ground had been ripped out from under him. His mind raced, trying to make sense of what he was seeing, but it was impossible. The truth was too horrible, too twisted. His wife, 
His Anna was having an affair with his own mother. The realization hit him like a ton of bricks, and he slumped back in his chair, feeling as though the air had been sucked out of the room. For what felt like hours, Mark sat there, staring at the screen, unable to tear his eyes away from the footage. He watched as Anna and Martha continued their affair, oblivious to the fact that they were being watched. The betrayal cut deeper than anything Mark had ever experienced. He wanted to confront Anna, to demand answers, but he didn't know how. How do you tell your wife that you know she's been sleeping with your own mother? How do you even begin to have that conversation? One evening, after days of stewing in his own misery, Mark finally gathered the courage to confront Anna. He waited until after dinner, when the children were in bed and the house was quiet. Anna was sitting on the couch, absent-mindedly flipping through a magazine, when Mark sat down across from her. His heart was pounding and his hands were shaking, but he knew he had to do this. Mark approached Anna with a serious expression, clearly troubled by something weighing on his mind. He asked her a difficult question. His voice strained as he broached the topic that had been haunting him, whether she was having an affair. Anna looked at him, surprised by the accusation, and quickly denied it, shaking her head. She insisted there was nothing going on, clearly taken aback by his question. But Mark didn't back down. He leaned in closer, his gaze intense, and revealed that he knew the truth. He told Anna that he had seen everything, his frustration growing as he confronted her. Despite his revelation, Anna continued to deny the affair, trying to reassure him that he was mistaken, that there was nothing for him to worry about. She claimed he was imagining things, that whatever he thought he had seen wasn't real. Mark's frustration boiled over. He raised his voice, unable to contain his anger and disbelief. He accused her directly of being with his mother, revealing the depth of his hurt and betrayal. Anna recoiled slightly at his words but quickly regained her composure, continuing to insist that nothing had happened, that his suspicions were unfounded, and that he was not thinking clearly. Despite her calm demeanor, the tension between them was palpable. The trust between them shattered. Feeling utterly defeated, Mark stood up and walked out of the room. He couldn't be near her, couldn't even look at her. The woman he had loved, the mother of his children, had betrayed him in the worst possible way. And to make matters worse, she wouldn't even admit it. Mark didn't know what to do. He was too ashamed to talk to anyone about it. Who could he tell? Who would believe that his wife was having an affair with his own mother? He felt completely alone, drowning in his own sorrow and anger. The weeks dragged on, and Mark's mental state continued to deteriorate. He became consumed by thoughts of the affair, of the betrayal that had torn his family apart. The thought of confronting Martha made him sick to his stomach, and he knew that if he didn't do something soon, he would lose his mind. One evening, as Mark sat alone in his office, a dark thought crossed his mind. He knew it was wrong, knew it was something he could never take back. But the more he thought about it, the more it seemed like the only way out. Martha was the source of all his pain, the reason his life had spiraled into chaos. If she were gone, maybe, just maybe, things could go back to normal. The plan formed slowly in his mind, almost as if it were happening outside of himself. He knew that Martha always drank tea before bed, a habit she had kept up for years. It would be easy, he thought, to slip something into her tea. 
Something that would end her life quickly and painlessly. Something that would make it look like she had simply died in her sleep. The next day, Mark went to a hardware store in a neighboring town, far enough away that no one would recognize him. He purchased a small bottle of arsenic, claiming that he needed it to deal with a rat problem in the attic. The cashier didn't ask any questions, and Mark left the store with the bottle tucked safely in his coat pocket. That night, after dinner, Mark watched as Martha prepared her usual cup of tea. He waited until she stepped out of the kitchen for a moment, then quickly poured a few drops of the arsenic into the cup. His hands were shaking as he did it, but he forced himself to stay calm, to act natural. Martha returned to the kitchen, unaware of what had just happened. She picked up the cup and took a sip, smiling as she thanked Mark for keeping her company. Mark could barely look at her. He felt a surge of guilt, but it was quickly overridden by a sense of grim determination. This was the only way. Martha drank the tea slowly, savoring each sip as she chatted about her day. Mark watched her closely, waiting for any sign that the poison was taking effect. But Martha didn't seem to notice anything out of the ordinary. She finished her tea, then stood up to go to bed, giving Mark a kiss on the cheek as she passed by him. Mark watched her leave the room, his heart pounding in his chest. He knew it wouldn't be long now, he waited in the living room, listening for any sound from upstairs, but the house remained eerily quiet. An hour later, Mark crept upstairs and peeked into Martha's bedroom. She was lying in bed, her eyes closed, her breathing slow and steady. For a moment, Mark thought that maybe the poison hadn't worked, that she was simply sleeping. But as he stepped closer, he noticed that her chest was no longer rising and falling. She was gone. Mark left the room and returned to his own bedroom, where Anna was already asleep. He slipped into bed beside her, his heart still racing. He lay there in the darkness, listening to the sound of Anna's breathing, trying to convince himself that everything would be okay now. But deep down, he knew that things would never be the same again. The next morning, Anna found Martha. She had gone to check on her, as she often did, and when she saw Martha lying there so still, she immediately knew something was wrong. Anna called out to Mark, her voice shaking with panic, and within minutes, the house was filled with the sound of sirens as the paramedics arrived. The paramedics declared Martha dead on the scene. They said it appeared to be natural causes, likely a heart attack in her sleep. Mark played his part well, pretending to be shocked and heartbroken. Though inside, he felt a strange sense of calm. He had done what needed to be done, and now it was over. Anna, on the other hand, was devastated. She cried for days, unable to understand how Martha could be gone so suddenly. Mark watched her grief with a mix of guilt and cold detachment. He told himself that this was for the best, that Anna would eventually move on, that their lives could return to normal. But he also knew that he had crossed a line, and there was no going back. As the days passed, Mark kept waiting for the guilt to consume him, for the weight of his actions to crush him. But instead, he found himself feeling increasingly numb. The horror of what he had done was buried deep within him, locked away where he didn't have to confront it. He continued with his life, playing the role of the grieving son, all the while hiding the dark secret that only he knew. The investigation into Martha's death was brief. 
The coroner's report confirmed the cause of death as natural, and with no evidence to suggest foul play, the case was closed. Mark had covered his tracks well, and it seemed that he had gotten away with murder. The poison may have ended Martha's life, but it had also poisoned Mark's soul. He had crossed a line that could never be uncrossed, and though he had succeeded in his plan, he was left with a hollow victory. The truth of what he had done would always be there, lurking in the shadows, waiting to consume him. Detective Evans was relatively new to the force, but known for her sharp instincts. As she reviewed the reports, the details didn't sit right with her. Martha was in good health for her age, with no prior heart problems. Yet, here she was, suddenly dead in her sleep. It didn't add up. Despite the initial findings, Detective Evans decided to dig deeper, trusting her gut that there was more to the story. By March 10th, 2009, Evans started by looking into Martha's medical history. She reached out to Martha's doctor and reviewed her records, confirming that Martha had no significant history of heart disease. This fueled her suspicion even more. Evans began questioning the people closest to Martha, starting with Anna and Mark Whitman. During the interviews, Evans noticed Anna's nervousness. She chalked it up to grief at first, but there was something more. Anna seemed uneasy, almost as if she were hiding something. Mark, on the other hand, was calm, almost too calm. He seemed detached, his responses rehearsed. Evans made a note to keep a closer eye on him. On March 15th, Evans decided to order a second autopsy. It was a risky move, as there was no clear reason to suspect foul play, but Evans believed it was necessary. The results would either confirm the heart attack or reveal something else entirely. When the report came back, it was clear that Martha's death was not natural. Traces of arsenic were found in her system. A lethal dose that would have caused her heart to fail. This was no accident. It was murder. With this new information, the case was reopened and the investigation shifted gears. Detective Evans knew that whoever had poisoned Martha had gone to great lengths to make it look natural. She needed to find out who had access to the arsenic and a motive to use it. Evans zeroed in on the Whitman family, particularly Mark and Anna. Both had the opportunity, but what about the motive? By March 20th, as the investigation continued, Evans discovered a hidden camera system in the Whitman household. Mark had installed it, hoping to catch his wife cheating. What Evans found on the footage, however, was far more disturbing. The videos revealed the secret affair between Anna and her mother-in-law, Martha. It was a shocking revelation that gave Evans a potential motive for murder. The footage showed Martha and Anna together, often in heated arguments that ended in passionate reconciliations. It was clear that their relationship was intense and volatile. Martha's growing possessiveness and Anna's fear were evident. The affair had placed enormous strain on Anna, and it was possible that Mark had discovered it. If so, he would have had a powerful reason to want Martha out of the picture. But the affair alone wasn't enough to convict Mark. Evans needed solid evidence linking him to the murder. She intensified her investigation, scrutinizing every aspect of Mark's life in the days leading up to Martha's death. On April 2nd, Evans dug into Mark's financial records, searching for anything unusual. That's when she found it. A receipt from a local hardware store dated just a few days before Martha's death. The purchase? Arsenic, 
listed under the guise of pest control supplies. Evans knew this was the break she needed. The receipt was the missing link that tied Mark to the crime. By April 10th, Evans brought Anna in for questioning once more. The pressure was mounting, and Evans knew that Anna was close to breaking. She carefully revealed what she knew, the arsenic, the affair, the hidden camera footage. Anna was visibly shaken. She had suspected that something wasn't right after Martha's death, but she never imagined that Mark could be responsible. As Evans pressed her, Anna began to unravel, confessing the affair in full, but insisting she had no part in the murder. Anna's confession gave Evans more context, but it wasn't enough to arrest Mark. However, combined with the receipt and the hidden footage, it painted a damning picture. Evans knew it was only a matter of time before Mark slipped up. She kept him under close surveillance, waiting for the moment when he would make a mistake. By June 5th, it was evident that Mark Whitman was growing increasingly paranoid. The investigation was closing in on him, and he knew it. The pressure was starting to show. He was irritable, snapping at Anna and their children, and he was drinking more than usual. His calm facade was beginning to crack. Evans decided it was time to confront Mark directly. She presented him with the evidence, the arsenic receipt, the footage of the affair, and the second autopsy report. Mark tried to deny everything, but it was clear he was cornered. Evans watched as Mark's composure crumbled. The weight of his actions was finally catching up with him. June 12th, 2009. Mark was arrested at his home. The community was stunned. Crestwood was a quiet town. And the idea that someone like Mark, a respected member of the community, could commit such a crime was unthinkable. The news spread quickly, and the town was abuzz with rumors and speculation. August 10th, 2009. The trial began in a packed courtroom. The prosecution presented its case methodically, laying out the evidence piece by piece. The hidden camera footage revealed the affair, the receipt tied Mark to the poison, and the autopsy report confirmed the cause of death. The defense argued that Mark had been pushed to the edge by the betrayal of his wife and mother, but it was clear that this was premeditated murder. Anna testified, recounting the affair and her growing fear of Martha. She described how Martha's possessiveness had become overwhelming and how she had felt trapped in the relationship. But she also expressed shock and horror at the idea that Mark could have killed his own mother. Her testimony painted a picture of a family torn apart by secrets and lies. It was on September 5th when the jury deliberated for only a few hours before returning with a verdict, guilty of first-degree murder. Mark was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The courtroom was silent as the sentence was read, the weight of the tragedy hanging heavy in the air. Anna was left alone, ostracized by the community that had once welcomed her. She couldn't stay in Crestwood, not after everything that had happened. She packed up her things and moved away, taking her children with her, hoping to start over somewhere far from the memories of what had been lost. October 2010, as the case of Mark Whitman came to a close, it left many questions lingering in the minds of those who followed the tragic story. Detective Evans, who had worked tirelessly to uncover the truth, couldn't help but wonder whether the devastating events were the inevitable result of a family built on secrets and deception. Some have speculated that Martha's possessiveness and Anna's desperate attempts to break free played a significant role 
in driving Mark to murder. Could things have turned out differently if Anna had ended the affair earlier? Or if Mark had confronted the truth in another way? So, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more true crime stories, where we delve into the dark paths that lead ordinary people to commit extraordinary crimes.